the prep on Stranger Things, did you work really hard on that? Yes. And to what it, end? I okay, mean, so it's like, for me, it's like always starts with like deeply psychological kind of secrets is what I call them. Okay. Where it's like, you know, you start to look at the behavior, much more the behavior than what the character says, more what the character doesn't say. There was a fascinating thing about him too early on where he brings up his daughter to this science teacher in the woods as he's walking. And then he says that she moved away to her mom's, you're not gonna get her, and then someone else says that she's dead. And I was like, why would a dude bring that up to a guy? Like, and then lie about it? Like, what is, there were these little sort of secrets that I find really interesting. Like, when Winona comes to ask, when Joyce comes to ask about Will, she says like, you know, the kids made fun of him, they called him a, they called him a, and he goes, was he? And you're like, why, and it's, it's funny, and it's horrible. But it's like, why would you do that, man? Like, what are you doing? Like, and so these little moments to me are much more important than like, and so in that way you start to construct the, you know, I mean, he's clearly doing that because he lost a daughter and because when someone loses their child on some level, he wishes the world felt the pain that he did and he's angry. But he'll I, joke with you and talk about coffee and contemplation. Like, so there's all these layers that you like start to add in, right? And those layers require a lot of work uh, investigatively uh, on the page, and then it requires a lot of personal work. Like, what makes me angry? Or where do I hide? Or how do I hide? How come it crosses over to personal work? Because you can't do it as a one-to-one. -one. Like, there's a funny thing where, like, he's, he's retired from acting, so I could talk about him. <laughs> Daniel Day-Lewis, who I've always, like, loved. The yeah. way that he works is, I don't know that he would call it method, but it's it's the what I consider the bullshit idea of method, which is that you know he played that the thing the guy who got thrown in prison, the father. Thing yes, like yes, in and the name actually, of the father. Like he actually spent like five days in a prison with them waking him up all the time, dehydrated, like because he wanted to experience that. And I was like. I mean, that's amazing, right? <laughs> yeah. But it's also like kind of useless because like his experience of that is not the character's experience of that. Like if I'm a hardened gangster, right? And I'm in prison for six months. If I actually go spend six months in prison, I'm a wimpy like <laughs> dude from, yeah. you know, actor theater dude. So like my reaction to prison is gonna be different to the, the gangster's reaction to prison. Right. And so the one-to-one -one doesn't actually work, whereas the analogy is what works, right? So the analogy is, you know, prisoner, a gangster is to prison as David is to what? Because it's my blood, it's my flesh that's gonna react. So when I get mad in Stranger Things or something, it's, you know, it's, I'm not mad about Will Byers. I have no relationship to Will Byers. Like, and that's why the, there's funny things that always happen in in movies where people are like, okay, I'm gonna really get you into it. We're gonna show you, we're gonna show you the video of Superman fighting the guy. And you're like, I got no relationship to Superman <laughs> yeah. fighting the guy. Put a picture of my mom up there. Yeah, exactly. Like the idea that you can actually engage in emotional reality is a bit, to me, it's a bit of a red herring because you, what you actually want is you want to analogously kind of trick the audience into believing that I'm getting upset for Will Byers when really I'm, I'm dealing with my own instrument. So it starts with kind of this base psychology to me, which is like, who really is this guy deep down, who he, he lies to himself about, right? Like we all lie to ourselves. Like yes. I lie to myself about cer certain ways that I am. Like I think I'm a good guy. And like, if you were to actually just be a detective and watch me as a fly on the wall, you might see certain things that I do to friends or whatever. That, yeah, or whatever. Like, I have to believe that I'm a good guy as I walk around the world, but that's my own personal thing. Whereas, like, you might see that, no, oh, no, David wants control or he wants to feel smarter than people or he whatever it is that you would define as my character. That's what I investigatively do. And then I construct his psychology around who he thinks he is in the world and how his shtick is in the world. And then through that, you get real character, which is like Jim Hopper's like a man. Like, you know, he punches things, he doesn't cry. So whether or not I feel sadness or he is a big baby, he still behaves in this way. And this is the thing that to me, it's so much work that doesn't get seen. Yeah. And that's why I have so many, even friends of mine who are like, why you do all that? And it's like, because you 
got to do that work so that in the one, and you don't even show it or anything. You just do, it's the iceberg. And then you just see this, but you feel it. And that is why I do it, is because I want people to fall in love with Jim Hopper and need him, need him to save Will Byers. So that when they're watching the show, they're just like, like, you know, they're just so sucked in and they're like, oh my God, if that kid dies, like that guy is gonna die. And I, so I need to personalize it to such a degree that you feel like David Harbour's not gonna be okay. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you like what you just saw, then why not subscribe? Click right here for lots more off camera. And if you wanna see the hour long version of these conversations, I'm gonna give you the secret link. Here it is, offcamera.com. Check it out.